Hi guys, welcome. It's a, a, a nippy uh, winter's morning. Well, the winter is starting, but uh, nevertheless, we're in the forge. Uh, forge is running as you can hear, and I've been asked whether I can forge a herb cutter. Haven't had one of those as well, so uh, let's get cracking. Step one, I take about an inch, isolate it. Still up, focusing my blows to the tip, forging that out, flattening out my metal, squaring things up and bad, and now I'm going to start forging that tip down. Making sure things are Still, losing steel, losing heat to my metal, so we're back to the forge. Okay, so all I'm doing now is I'm going to quickly just square that one up, and now I'm going to start with my taper. Thank you. 
right, so that's it for now. Uh, we are now going to do the other side. So now it's a matter of deciding how long the cut is going to be. I don't want it too long, so uh, I'm going to do about there, I think. And I'm just tilting on the axle, giving myself a little visual indicator. Now I'm going to heat that up. Uh, I must probably first cut this thing off. Yeah, let me go do that. Okay, so now we've got this cut off, and that is going back into the forge. Now we're going to be working on this section there. Okay, so now working on the other side. I continue hammering half on half, half off until I've got half my metal isolated. Then I start working on the tip ever so slightly increasing my angle at the back, bringing this up. Now I'm going to straighten out and draw a bit of metal. So I'm going to use the horn at the angle. spot over the edge of my handle, working on that taper there, measurements the same I'm going to put that on there just do a little mark so that I know that this time there I need to draw it to that mark there right okay so now I have my mark and as you can see I've got a good one and a half inch to go still so I need to isolate a bit more material at the top here and then start working on that taper right from the back
Okay, so this is where we're sitting at now. The two-pronged beast is now ready. Okay, so what next step is uh, I'll most probably start forging out that bevel. Uh, yeah, so let me let me start doing that. Okay, so now we're going to start working on these bevels. So uh, I'm going to reheat that. Okay, so now that I've 
got heat in the still, it'll be easier to do that little coal. And I'm hoping you can see I'm not in front of the camera. I don't want to do a little sexiness up there, making sure that the blade profile and that little coal is lined up. Yeah, I'm good with that. So let's look, let's look. Yeah, so I do want to just uh, emphasize that curl a bit more.
like that. Okay, so now do the same on the other side. All right, so uh, now I'm trying to remember what I did on the other side. And to do the same on this side, we did pull that over a bit more. Okay, I did roll down.
listening to this little uh, hoop cutter. And obviously I'm using a rocking motion because that edge is not straight. And I'm going to keep on doing this until I've got something better to do. Or until all the heat has left my metal. Just make sure that everything is still straight and in alignment as I'm expecting and that is really cool. I don't know if you guys can see on the video but uh, see those little hairs, fire skull popping off? That is your very very first sign, first sign that you've had a successful heat treat, right? Okay so I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna leave this in there until uh, she's cold and I can actually touch her with my hand. What we're going to do then is uh, stick her in the oven and temper. As this is 5160, we'll be tempering at 180 degrees Celsius for at least one hour. Tempering into the oven, 180 degrees for at least one hour. Alright guys, so uh, it's on to grinding. So what we have here is that one there. It's been uh, heat treated, it's been tempered. So now rough grinding, 36 grit belt. Enough talking. Let's go. Yeah, I'm happy with that profile, so doing a flash now. Keep in mind that when you heat, you're not heat heated. You want to constantly, constantly dip it a little bit. When your edge gets warm, you're undoing your heating. So you want to keep it to low 180 degrees Celsius. So you do not want the color or the metal to start coloring. See the cross yeah. from grinding like this and then grinding like that. Yeah. I get that cross button, which is not something that I'm uh, too concerned about at this point. As you're grinding, you'll uh, pick up which side you'll need to uh, focus on a bit more, just to get that grind to sit nice and center. And I'm 
more tricks with uh, doing a rough run than like we're doing now is uh, to take your time on that first run. Don't rush through it. I'm liking that. Okay, so for my rough, I'm fairly happy with that. Edge thickness is fairly consistent. So that's the result of the rough grind that was a 36 grit and I did a full flat on this. So one bevel to the top. Right, so what are we going to do now is just go on to 100 grit, clean that up a bit and then we'll do reducing grits from the runner. So now we're on to a uh, 100 grit belt. And the whole idea with the 100 grit is now to remove the scratch mark left behind by the 36 grit. Constantly checking to see, okay, I need to put the pressure there. Get rid of those scratch marks. And same thing on the other side. Get rid of that. And obviously the finer your grit, the, uh, the higher the friction and the quicker your metal will heat up. So now it becomes extremely important, the finer you go, the more you pull your steel off, right? Okay, so now once I'm happy with uh, the surfaces, and I'm almost there, I still do have a couple of scratches on this side, so we'll focus on getting those out. Done. I'm going to clean my edge with a hundred. Okay. So I want to get in there. I'm clean off these sides. So I'm going to track my belt over the edge. And use that soft curly to the belt to smooth things up. Yeah, we're good with that. Okay, so now I want to work on uh, my edge. I want to start establishing that edge. And now I'm going to have to just readjust the camera as I do want to work on the top of the belt. Okay, so what I want to do now is just add a slight angle. Start softening that. And this is where it really is important to wear safety glasses. Okay, so I put a slight bevel on there, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I know the bevel is extremely thick. We're going to start thinning out that bevel. So I've got a bevel on both sides. My edge is established. I can actually feel that there's a slight burr there. Yes, it's a hundred and, uh, or a hundred good burr. So uh, it won't attack much. But now I'm going to start blending, and you'll see my hands dropping and I'm blending that curvature in. Okay. I'll see that curvature comes up a bit higher. I want to do that even lower on my belt. The 
see, even I have. Feels like I'm playing a video game. That video game is called Dodging Spots. Almost did with that. Okay, so you can see that nice and, and high rounding I've got there. Okay, so, cleaning off, cooling down, other side, same thing, working that bevel, higher. And if you're grinding on the top of your belt, um, it is extremely important to keep your pressure equal. Right, so if I step down here, it's going to start eating into the tines of it. So keeping the pressure just equal and giving it a couple of seconds to grind and then having a look at the results of that grind will save you quite a lot of headache. We'll be working on the little uniformity on that edge. Obviously, the more time you spend on this, the better the finish you're going to get. Uh, well, I'm quite, quite happy with that. On 100 grips, that's good. Okay, so going over to 180 grips, same thing. Obviously, the more time you spend on this, uh, the nicer it will be. Like, for instance, if you don't dig in on your times, uh, you'll get a much nicer finish. But I will draw, show you guys a bit of a trick for blending those in. Yeah, now on this one, I often do not clean up the back at all. So I just want those places. So that was my, uh, my 180. I'm now going over to a 320. So 320, same thing. So I do want to round those edges, so I'll go in flat first. Clean up all the grind marks, and then I'll go to flight angle on this side, flight angle on the other side, and my flight belt will create a little bevel. And that is fairly cool, I'm quite happy with that. So, let's clean it down. Okay, but now I want to blend all those surfaces. So I've ground like my butt. I've got those neat marks. Okay, let's just do this. So now I've ground like my butt. Right. And I've got those neck marks that I want to get out. Okay. This side is fairly cool. There I've got a slight dip. But we want to get rid of those marks there. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to go over to a soft wheel.
Okay, so now we're onto a contact wheel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend same bells. Same bell, it's a 320. I'm going to flip just to a small wheel. And all I want to do now is get into those uh, little corners of mine. Pretty much break whatever soft piece there might be. Break, I know on my forging side of things there's no sharp edges. Alright, I'm fairly happy with that. So, now ladies and gentlemen, we will get to do some hand sanding on this. Yay! Fun! Okay, so there's our result. Um, I have uh, subsequently decided that there's going to be no hand sanding and in comes a uh, scotch bite surface conditioning belt. Right, so uh, let's just finish it on there and get it over with. You'll notice that I'm grinding it down. Because this thing is so sharp, because it's so sharp, I'm afraid that it might... Uh, Nick my belt. What I'm doing now is I'm already sharpening this blade as I'm grinding. You can see, I'm not sure whether you can actually see, there is a, uh, a burr already forming on that. So uh, all I'm doing is uh, running it one more time. Okay, so there we go. That is completely done. I think I need to just uh, dip this in fairy chloride. Because I don't like the, oh, that shiny stuff there. So uh, let's go do that. The fairy chloride dip. Oh crap. This is not going to work, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> so uh, we'll be doing a one-sided and one-sided. Damn it. Okay, this is not going to work very well. I am. And if you're wiping, whatever you're wiping, stay away from the business end, right? So wipe towards the edge if you ever need to wipe a blade. Don't wipe over the edge. Wipe towards the edge. Okay. 
And by doing that, I'm not getting an equal line or a straight line in the middle so I can etch from both sides. If I just let it sit there, obviously what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to get a straight edge line. It's a bit messy, so maybe I should have uh, thrown this out. Guys, I'm recording. We've got uh, quite a few people in the shop today, so uh, if you hear people in the background, yeah, that's students, staff. Not listening when I'm saying that I am recording. But anyway, we like them. So uh, they get to stay. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Lot there. Nice little homon we've got going there on this blade. So uh, I'm quite chuffed with that. Almost. It, it looks like it's coffee time. Bacon, is that my coffee? Ha 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 ha. All right, so this needs to needs to end now. All right, guys, there we go. That is our finish. But come, we we'll grab from you now, sir. So that's our finished on our HP. So I'm now going to clean this off, and uh, then we'll take it from there. Right now, we take our blade, and this is uh, a vat of water or a plastic tub of water full of bicarbonate of soda. So. Uh, while swishing it around, I'm neutralizing the ferric chloride. Right, also getting the stuff off my hands. And that is it, I'm quite happy with that result. So now we'll go and, uh, and dry her off. Okay, so uh, we've been etched. And now it is a matter of using Brasso, which is just a, a household polish. Uh, intended for brass. Yeah, I know that's not brass, but she works like a charm. So a bit on there, and uh, we just kind of wipe it down. Just, just buff that itch. Okay, so now there's the buffing that edge. As you can see, there's buffing compound on there, but uh, let's just put some more on there. Quite liking that. So uh, I might just go up. The rest of it just gets a, a very, very light buff. Okay, now the proof is always in the pudding. Is this thing sharp enough to shave? Yes, it is. So, uh, there we go. I can still feel burr on there, so let me just do that. There we go. Now it's a matter of just giving a bit of oil, and then we're done. Okay, so now it's a matter of just putting uh, Q20, which is a local equivalent of uh, WD-40. Copious amounts on that. Now if you're gonna use this for food, then obviously you're gonna just rub it. When it's hot, as it comes out of the oven, at uh, I'll put it in for another temper cycle, 180 degrees Celsius uh, for an hour. 
when it comes out of that I'll rub it with beeswax and uh, there we go so it'll be food safe and uh, sealed against the elements right so the Q20 in this case is not to toil up the blade but to get rid of uh, the the residue from the buffing compound Ta -da! quite enjoyed making this thanks guys thank you for watching if you enjoy what you see in these videos uh please hit subscribe right here and um then check out one of the following videos on this side either there in the middle or there right have fun enjoy and remember to share thanks for watching see you in the next one cheers